Uh, hi everyone, my name is Peter. I'm a PhD student from UNESCO IHC in Delft, Netherlands. I'm working on a project that is uh, funded by Bill and Medita Gates Foundation under the theme of emergency sanitation. In my area of study, I'm trying to come up with a technology for fecal or sludge treatment uh, to be applied in uh, disaster situations. And, uh, my field work is based in um, Nairobi where I'm working in a partnership with um, Sanaji Social Enterprise that is uh, providing sanitation in the slums. They fabricate toilets and sell to entrepreneurs in the slums who then charge the users in the slums. Sanaji plays the part of the collection of the waste. That's a thick or sludge that is uh, generated in the toilets and then transport it to central treatment point that is uh, located in a a place called Kenania. In Kenania, uh, the Sanaji have uh, various technologies for treatment of these fecal sludge, and one of the technologies is the composting, where they put um, fecal sludge, the raw fecal sludge, in the composting boxes in the first step, uh, just to initiate the composting process, but then later they transfer the sludge into composting winters where the rest of the process takes place. So one of the technologies is just the normal composting. The other technology that Sanaji employs in their treatment is a technology that is based on heating. And in this, they use a biomax treatment unit that um, uses heated oil, which then eats the fecal sludge. And basically what they're trying to do here is uh, just to sanitize the waste because the equipment is capable of uh, generating heat up to around 70 degrees Celsius. But then this is not an end in itself because after this treatment, then the waste has to be taken to the composting winters. So I would say ultimately they combine the composting with this uh, biomax uh, treatment process. There are other, a couple of other technologies that uh, Sanaji is trying to come up, the black soldier fly uh, technology where they are trying to use uh, flies, this kind of special flies, for, uh, to degrade their waste. At this point, uh, they have done a pilot scale. Currently, they are trying to upscale to full scale. The technology that uh, they are trying to apply is the biogas production, where they are aiming at producing uh, biogas for uh, energy generation. Uh, but this is a pilot scale, and also in these uh, projects, uh, they are working with a, a fellow colleague who is also from the Bill and Miller Gates uh, Foundation funded project. Her name is Joy. Here they are trying to optimize generation of biogas in the treatment of the fecal sludge with the intention that they upscale it to a full scale at a later stage. So you see here, there are already existing technologies that uh, Sanaji is using. But the reason as to why we are trying to come up with more technologies is because we want more alternative technologies that can be used in different contexts. For instance, in my case, I'm looking at the context of emergency, where, of course, uh, the situation is a bit different uh, from what we see here in Sanaji. When you look at the space um, availability in emergency camps, you couldn't imagine applying the technology of composting, for instance, because it requires a lot of space. It's a slow process that takes perhaps six months to mature the, the product. And that will not be directly applicable in the case of emergencies. So you already see why we are eager uh, to come up with more technologies. At the moment I'm trying to look at the technology that is based on microwave irradiation because I see this is a potential area of exploration because of the benefits that could be tied to the microwave irradiation, which includes that the technology is fast enough uh, to be applied in emergencies, such that we would have a, a reduced footprint where land is a problem, and the technology is also easy to control. We can come up with a compact technology that is easy to be operated at site. Uh, at the moment, I'm at the preliminary tests where I'm using just common domestic microwave. And this is basically for preliminary tests. 
uh, which I've done for a couple of months now. The purpose of using uh, this small scale unit is to explore the possibilities for application of it if we are to upscale it. And besides that, very importantly, uh, this test is very useful in generating data that we have used in the design of a pilot scale unit that is um, currently under uh, production. In my microwave experiments, of course, there are some steps that are involved and the very first step is sampling where we uh, get the samples that then we use in microwave heating. Uh, what we basically do during the uh, sampling is that we get big chunks of the waste and mix it in uh, big uh, brackets and then from that we draw some small portions of the waste of about 500 grams that we use in the microwave uh, tests. In the characterization we look at various parameters. Key among them is the element eggs where we determine the concentration as carries eggs. We also look at the Escherichia coli. We look at the total and volatile solids, the chemical oxygen demand, which is COD, the nitrates, the ammonia, the phosphate, and of course other uh, parameters. Uh, the most important parameters um, in our tests that we use to evaluate our technology is uh, the Ascaris eggs, which represents the elements, uh, the E. coli. Um, of course, we also uh, look at the weight so that we can know the effect of the micro treatment on the weight reduction and also the organic matter. Now, I would like to take you through experiments that we've carried out using our domestic microwave. And the objective here is to evaluate the applicability of this technology in the treatment of thick or sludge in emergency situations. The specific objectives of uh, this study include testing the effectiveness of uh, the microwave technology in the inactivation of the Ascaris eggs and also the effectiveness of the technology in activation of the bacterial pathogens where we're using E. coli as the indicator. We're also looking at the effectiveness of this technology in the weight reduction because we know in the emergencies uh, we got problem with the resources especially the transport and also the final land space for disposal of uh, the fecal sludge so if we reduce the weight then we take care of the transportation and also the final disposal site if the waste is uh, disposed of when it is high in organic matter uh, then we are likely to have the problem of uh, vector intrusions and also the issues of smell. We are also looking at the effectiveness of our microwave technology in the reduction of organic matter as well. So after the sample characterization, then the next step is the treatment. But before the actual exposure of the waste to the microwave radiation, uh, we go to do sample preparations. And of course, in this study, we are aiming at uh, testing various sample sizes. But so far, with the, the domestic microwave, we have uh, tested two sample sizes, including 100 grams and 200 grams. So what we do is that we get the known amount of the sample into a glass beaker. And for instance, for the 100 gram sample, we put in um, a one liter beaker. And for the 200 gram sample, well, we put the sample into a two liter beaker. And why we use two different sizes of the beakers is because we do not want to vary so many parameters in our treatment. Uh, for instance, for the put 100 grams in one liter and 200 grams of sample in two liter, then we maintain the thickness of the sample, which is about one centimeter. 
and then we can be sure that we only varied the sample size and not the sample depth, which is very important when you are microwaving or rather when you're exposing the, uh, any kind of sample to the microwaves. During our characterizations, we looked at the background concentration of the Ascaris eggs, which is one of the main parameters that we are evaluating technology on. And we found that the concentration was zero. So because we want to evaluate our technology based on this uh, parameter, among others, uh, we decided to spike a known concentration of Ascaris eggs so that we so that we can be sure that at least there's presence of uh, the Ascaris. Now we have our samples that are spiked with the Ascaris egg. Um, the next step is to do the actual treatment uh, or exposing the samples to the microwaves. But we also want to look at the effects of the microwave on the samples based on various uh, microwave energy levels which is a combination of the time of exposure and the power level. We also have to select our operational condition. For instance, the power levels and also uh, the combinations of the time the durations of exposure. Uh, in this study, we've used three microwave power levels, including 465 watts, 1,085 watts, and the third power level that we tested is 1,550 watts, which is the maximum capacity of our microwave. In combination with these three microwave power levels that we've chosen, we also have uh, various times of exposure for each and every uh, power level. And the time that we selected for these uh, ranges from 30 seconds to 10 minutes, specifically uh, 30 seconds, uh, 1 minute, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 7 minutes, and 10 minutes, which is the maximum time of exposure for each and every microwave power level that we have tested. So to treat our waste, we simply insert the glass beaker that is containing our sample into the microwave cavity, and then we select the power level that we want to test, um, and the time that we want to expose our waste to that power level. Uh, for instance, we would choose uh, 465 watts for one minute. Then we simply run our microwave, and then after the expiration of the time of exposure, we draw our sample from the microwave cavity and immediately uh, take the temperature using an infrared thermometer. The importance of taking the temperature is because we also want to see the variations of the temperature throughout the various power levels and time combinations. And this is important because temperature also plays a part in the destruction of some of the microorganisms like the E. coli and the element eggs that we are looking. Afterwards, the sample is, is cooled down to room temperature and the final weight taken and then um, analyzed for the various parameters, including the element eggs, uh, the E. coli, uh, the Vs and the Ts ratio, and also the, from the initial weight and the final weight, we can also uh, calculate the weight reduction in the sample. Of course, each of the parameters that I just mentioned use different methods for determination. And for instance, for the element eggs, that is uh, Ascaris eggs, uh, we use the US EPA method that is modified by some scientists in the University of Consul Natal. For the E. coli, we use the surface plate technique using the chromo code coliform, agar is the media. And for the TS and the VS, we use a graphimetric method that is outlined in the standard methods. Uh, for the weight, we simply use a weighing balance to determine the initial weight and the final weight sample after the treatment. Now, I would like to take you through the various analytical procedures that we use to analyze uh, the various um, 
parameters that I just mentioned. And the first one is the element X, where we use Ascaris X as the indicator. We simply get 20 grams from our treated sample and uh, add about uh, 50 milliliters of the ammonium bicarbonate. And the purpose of adding the ammonium bicarbonate is to disassociate the eggs that are stuck in the sample. So after the addition of the ammonium bicarbonate, we mix the waste for a period of 20 minutes using a magnetic stirrer. After the 20 minutes uh, mixing, uh, the sample is filtered through two sieve sizes, including 100 microns and 25 microns. The purpose of the 100 micron sieve is to remove the bigger debris while the purpose of the 25 microns is to retain both uh, the smaller debris and most importantly the Ascaris eggs. So what we do is that we stack the 100 microns sieve on top of the 25 microns and then we pour the sample on top of the 100 micron sieve and then wash it thoroughly using a squeeze bottle. After the washing, uh, we of course discard the debris that is retained on the 100 microns the sieve and then again uh, wash again the second time the retentate, the debris and the eggs that are retained on the 25 microns sieve. Afterwards, then we wash the, the retentate into a clean beaker and then transfer it into 15 mils um, Pralcon tubes that are then centrifuged at 3000 revolutions per minute for 5 minutes. And the purpose of this is to concentrate, to reduce the amount of water in our sample such that at the end of the centrifugation we get a pellet at the bottom that contains a high concentration of the Ascaris eggs and the supernatant that is disposed of. After the centrifugation, of course, we are left with a pellet that contains both the debris and a very high concentration of the Ascaris eggs and the supernatant that is floating on top. So we pour this um, supernatant out and then we leave uh, the pellet that contains our eggs. So the next step is to float these eggs. And by doing this, we use a solution of zinc sulfate, which we prepare to attain a specific gravity of about 1.3, uh, which is higher than that of the Ascaris eggs. So when we apply, we ensure that we are floating the eggs. After that process, uh, we ensure now the eggs are floating on top in the uh, solution. Uh, but then we, there's a lot of debris that needs to be uh, reduced. So what we do is that we take the Vulcan tubes again uh, through a centrifugation step at um, uh, 2,000 revolutions per minute for five minutes. And after that, we get um, both a debris that is settling at the bottom of the tube and the supernatant. And because our the Ascaris eggs has a lower specific gravity than the solution that we are using, uh, we can be sure that they are floating on top of the solution. So it is this solution that we are interested in. So we carefully filter the supernatant that is containing the eggs uh, through a 25 micron sieve and uh, wash it thoroughly just to make sure that the solution is completely uh, removed. Then uh, we rinse the retentate, which is basically the eggs that are retained on the 25 micron sieve back to a clean uh, beaker. Uh, so at this stage we have um, element eggs that are contained in a big volume of water but then we want to concentrate again by desertification. So what we do is that we transfer the volume, uh, the, we transfer the solution back to the uh, Vulcan tubes, the certification tubes, and then centrifuge um, the sample one more time at 3000 revolutions per minute for five minutes, after which 
Again, we pour the spanatant and then uh, we remain with the, rather the debris that is settling at the bottom that has a high concentration of the Ascaris egg. Now, the next important step, of course, is uh, incubation. But just before the incubation, we want to be sure that our sample truly contains the eggs. So what we do is that we take about one milliliter and put it on a microscope slide and then observe it on the microscope. Time we use um, about uh, 10 times magnification and 45 uh, times magnification. So once we have confirmed that our sample contains uh, scarry's eggs, then we incubate it for 28 days at a temperature of about 28 degrees Celsius. After the expiration of the 28 days incubation period, uh, we take out the sample and then observe again under the microscope to see whether they developed or not. Uh, if we see uh, some larvae in the sample, then we can deduce that the power and the time of exposure that uh, we exposed our sample was not adequate enough to destroy scarry's eggs. Otherwise, if there is no uh, larvae observed in the Ascaris eggs, then we simply deduce that that particular combination of time and microwave power level was effective in the destruction of the eggs. Um, another important parameter that we have tested is the E. coli because then we use it as an indicator in activation of the bacterial pathogens in our treatment. For this parameter, as I said before, we use the chromocode agar uh, as the media using the service plate method whereby we take about one gram of the treated sample and then we dil serially dilute it. In this case, we have dilutions ranging from 10 times to about 100,000 times. And then we simply plate about 0 0.1 milliliter onto the agar plates. And then we incubate it at about that 7 degrees Celsius uh, for 24 hours. And then observe. There is development of uh, E. coli which of course is the color of uh, a purple to dark blue, then we deduce that the particular power and time combinations that we used in our microwave was not effective enough. Uh, but if we don't observe any uh, growth of the E. coli, then we can deduce that uh, the combination of the time and the power that we used uh, to treat our sample was effective enough to destroy the E. coli and therefore the bacterial pathogens. Uh, for the weight reduction, as I said before, we simply subtract the final weight, which is measured after exposing the samples to the microwaves, from the initial weight, which is taken just before the sample is exposed to the microwaves. And then the difference uh, tells us uh, the amount of weight that is lost as a result of the sample exposure to the microwaves. Uh, the other parameter is organic matter, where we use the VSTS ratio as the indicator. And we measure, um, as I said before, we measure the VS and the TS using the graphimetric method. Specifically for the TS, uh, we get a known weight, in this case we're using about 10 gram sample and then we treat it in the oven 105 degrees Celsius for two hours and then from the final weight and the initial weight we can calculate the total solids the TS. Uh, for the VS we further treat the same sample that we used for the TS uh, by treating it at in a muffle oven at around 550 degrees Celsius for about two hours and then from the final and the initial weight, we can be able to calculate the VS, which is the volatile solids. And then in the overall, we calculate the VSTS ratio using these values. 
which then can guide us into knowing if our sludge is organically stable or not. From the results of this study, we observed that the microwave technology can be an ineffective option for fecal sludge treatment, especially in the areas where there is space constraints. For instance, with the trials that we did, we attained inactivation of Ascari's eggs to the tune of over four log removal values, and this was achieved at very low energy levels. In fact, as low as 4 watt hour, as you can see in this graph. With regards to the E. coli, which was used as an indicator for the pathogenic bacteria, uh, the microwave attained inactivation levels above 4 log removal. Again, the power consumption was relatively low. Uh, to be specific, at around 23 watt hour, we observed uh, inactivation below detection limit. Furthermore, with the uh, microwave uh, treatment, we achieved over 70% volume reduction in the fecal sludge samples that we tested. However, these are significant in the operational cost because the higher you go with the volume reduction, the higher the energy consumption that you're going to incur and ultimately the related costs. So you've got to find some balance on how far you want to go with the drying. On the downside of it, we observed that we could not achieve any reasonable organic stabilization of the fecal sludge with the microwave treatment. As you can see in the graphs, the VSTS ratio, which we used as an index for sludge stability, was way above the 60% that is recommended by the European Environmental Agency for a stable sludge. So in overall, we can conclude that this study proves the applicability and effectiveness of microwave radiation technology in fecal sludge treatment. This is true especially when you look at its capability to inactivate both ascaris and bacterial pathogens that raise public health concerns in any fecal sludge management situation. It is thus feasible to scale up this technology and test it at pilot scale in order to determine if we can replicate the results that we obtained in our lab scale tests. Godwin Ruto, Joseph Oka, James Gurion, Peter Mawio, Jay Riongo.